Alright, Bomani Tamba, Africa for the Africans. First question I want to ask you is Africa for the Africans. Can you start off by telling us exactly what does that stand for? Yes, Africa for the Africans is a tourism investment uh, organization. Our goal and mission is strictly to uh, reorganize our brothers and sisters in African diaspora and connect them to the African continent. It's kind of building a bridge from the African diaspora to the African continent. And the way we do this is by tours. So uh, we do these roots and culture tours. Example, a country, uh, Ghana, is one of our perfect uh, connection. Um, uh, Ghana deals with the roots and culture, um, the African Holocaust, what happened to our ancestors that was stolen from uh, the coast of West Africa. You know, we talk about uh, Cape Coast and Elmina Holocaust dungeon. Uh, so those are points that we connect our people back to, but also the uh, independence movement and uh, the investment and all the wonderful things that's going on on the continent. Uh, the open connection of Africa with Africans is just the lack of that connection uh, with the ancestral land to the point where many of us will would find great opportunities as far as linking with our brothers and sisters that are doing wonderful things there in a country like Ghana uh, but it's hard for that to come together especially when you don't see a lot of uh, you know connection efforts details videos um, presentations of that sort so uh, the goal and the mission for Africa for the Africans becomes that energy that does those documentation, take it to the African continent, document the journey, share it with the brothers and sisters, and say, hey, let's uh, connect to the African continent, let's do, be a part of the nation building effort, and so on. It's just that a change of pace to just really just get back to doing things for ourselves and doing things with ourselves. Okay, cut. All right, now I'm going to go to the next one. And I'll make it short. Oh, yeah, 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 it's good. Yes, family. This is the money to your mother. Okay. Bomani Tayamba, Africa for the Af Africans. Tours and investments. The next question I have for you is what do you want to gain from Africa for the African tours and investment? Yes, the goal um, and, and mission in that part is. We want to really just set a foundation and base that we are building there in Ghana to do a high level of tourism and investments to the point where we can build you know, communities and build manufacturing operations to where our brothers and sisters can be a part of just manufacturing and making all the things that we need and you know, those naturally create those economic opportunities, those jobs um, that you know, we're looking for that brothers and sisters that are repatriating and brothers and sisters on the continent can uh, you know, get involved with. So that's a, a broader vision and it takes time to build on all of those energy but the energy of uh, the people who come on the Africa for the Africans tours and investment is an energy where when, while we're there in Ghana we're sharing that experience with them and then they're coming back and sharing the experience with others. So it's to really build up to that momentum of us really seeing that repatriation is the future, it's where we need to be at, but we all understand that we have to do these things in between to get to that point. Okay. Alright, ready for the next one? Yes, family, with Kofi Boots, we're keeping it strong. Okay. Whoop. On the documentary footage. Bomani Taimba, African for the Africans, tours and investments. Okay, my next question is. <laughs> What is your motivation behind Africa for the African Tours and Investments? Like, what uh, led you to start it? Yes, the energy of uh, you, you just being here as a black man, being skilled, and having a whole lot of background and wanting to do certain things for yourself. And then you end up at, on these plantation jobs, and then you end up having to deal with uh, the forces of uh, racism and just white domination and white privilege. And that just becomes frustration and it's painful to the point where you begin to just see how can I build something for myself and get away from this energy. So you begin to learn about your roots and culture and everything. And then you begin to just look at the focus of just saying, hey, um, why not just uh, think about this connecting to the ancestral land and build an operation there. So that just be begin to build that foundation that's being this 
frustrated and uncomfortable and then being put in a situation where you have to work with some sick people, especially some of these people that just look like you, but you know, a lot of times they're not exactly for you or have your best interest. So you're, you know, you have a combination of this, you know, this the opposition, this, and this is painful. So, you know, it, it just really just build that frustration energy. And that's why I tell people when you build careers and things like that, make sure you learn a career path where you're not forced to work in an environment that you don't want to work in. Okay. Okay, I got it. Bomani Taimba, Africa for the Africans, tour and investment. Can you uh, describe to those that have never been to uh, Ghana or Africa what uh, Africa is actually like? Uh, yes, uh, Ghana is like a perfect example of what I feel like is a representation or a great representation of the African continent. You know, Ghana is going to deal with uh, the roots and the culture, so you know, you're talking about just an incredible way of life as far as uh, uh, how to carry yourself, how male and female you know, react and how they come together as far as uh, building a true family, how actual family work and how communities work where if there's issues, communities get together and solve those issues. Uh, some of the principles that we may have had uh, here uh, in the early uh, 20th centuries in America, but uh, that's the fundamental principles that you see here in Ghana, to where you, you are in a country where uh, the business, the investment, also just an uh, open way of you know, not just uh, being around just a dominant of just Rat race, rat race, you know, it's just a, a, a frustration when you're here and you're just moving and bouncing around and everything is go, go, go. When you're here in Ghana, it's a little slow pace, uh, you know, now you can kind of relax, focus. Uh, then, you know, you're also dealing with the greatest hospitality. Our brothers and sisters there are just very welcoming and, you know, you feel a nice, nice, beautiful breeze of energy. I mean, most of the time you're here, it's very tropical, so you're never dealing with like it's very cold or very, very hot. You're dealing with a nice tropical climate. Uh, everything grows, so you know all the fruits and the vegetables that you're looking to eat are right there. The, the mangoes, the watermelon. Um, you know, you, you're a person that love fish like myself. You know, get you some nice big redfish, uh, tilapia. You know, you, you know, get get nice local food and you know the food as far as like the buffet that we have based on different people um, diet. It's just always one of the things people talk about. That's how incredible the food is. Because, you know, we've always been lied to that, uh, you know, about uh, what's going on in Africa. Like, you know, we're monkeys and we're climbing trees and we're eating out of, you know. You know, but, you know, you're looking at uh, a modern day uh, country with roots, culture, business, nightlife, shopping, networking. And there's a whole lot of adventures. Uh, you're right there on the coast of uh, West Africa. So you're right there by the Atlantic Ocean. So you do have nice beaches like Bojo Beach. Uh, we're there at One Africa. We're enjoying the tropical food and we're enjoying a nice incredible beach view and you know it's hospitality central so when I'm there everything is being taken care of for you and you can just be there and enjoy and be focused so you know Ghana is an incredible family and uh, take a look do your research and visit okay ready for the next one yes family absolutely Bomani Taimba Africa for the Africans tour and investment Okay, can you explain a little about the uh, nightlife there in Ghana and other places in Africa that you've been to with the tours? Yeah, I love the uh, nightlife uh, uh, there in Africa. It's very uh, peaceful. One of the things I can always say is that uh, you know sometimes I reflect back to this hanging out uh, in, in other parts uh, here in America, and then just you know it's just being a situation where you just you know you just wondering which idiot is going to start shooting and start fighting and you know many of those things do happen here. Uh, one of my experience and one of my many many experience in traveling to different parts of Africa uh, has been the fact that uh, you know we go out and socialize and there's no drama, we're just peaceful and enjoy ourselves. Uh, but nightlife is, uh, you know, most of the time we don't go to a bunch of high profile clubs, we just like to just you know, basically socialize with uh, the local energy to give people a feel of just how, you know, how Ghana is as far as this local people nightlife and um, um, uh, live music and this different cultural music and that energy. Uh, so I just love the nightlife. I always look forward to it. Uh, very energetic and uh, ent uh, entertainment and we always got uh, someone in a, in a stand somewhere uh, 
cooking, uh, grilling some, uh, you know, some, some nice fish. Speaking uh, on that, yeah, absolutely. I just want you to uh, dwell a little bit about the food and that grilled fish that you were just about to speak on. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, the food is just uh, incredible. I mean, you're talking about uh, you know, I'm a person that uh, more vegetarian than anything else, but uh, I definitely love fish. So you know, you know, the grilled fish and then you know, the local Ghanaian sauce and everything and nice taste and you know, you know cook that with some jollof rice or you know, other people do you know some of the, the local banku and things like that, but. It's uh, you know, it's a combination of uh, you know, if you live in America, it's you know, we're gonna give you the American type of food that you eat, but it's Ghanaian style. You know what I mean? So if you're doing chicken or fish, Keep it's you know, Ghanaian style, and that's one of the main things that uh, we want to make sure that uh, we link you with to make sure that you have some good food in the, in, the, in the belly, and you know, let the fruits and the vegetables are just locally grown. You know, so. You're not eating a bunch of GMO, fake food, this and that. Uh, and then, you know, you, you see when you drive around the country, you see orchards of just fruits and vegetables growing. So it, it's just um, wonderful to be somewhere where you can actually eat some real food because, you know, you go to the, the, the places, those, those chains of supermarkets and places where most of us get our food from. And it is most of the time you go in there, 90% of that food is just not food. So, you know, once you're there on the African continent, you get a chance to really feel the energy of this, what real food feel in the stomach. So come family, join us on the journey of a lifetime. All right. Okay, we're going to continue this. Bomani Tayamba, Africa for the Africans. Tours and investments. And can you uh, just talk a little bit about what types of investments and business opportunities are open uh, on the African continent and in Ghana? Yes, exactly. Um, some of your great business opportunities are going to be... Uh, once you're able to get there settled uh, and get a bank account, um, or even if you just have a, a credit union account from the Black Star Alliance Credit Union, uh, there's about uh, you know, there's uh, some incredible investments there. You have a 20% investment program uh, that you know that gives you an annual in return interest. Uh, also, when you're dealing with the banks uh, like Echo Bank, United Bank of Africa, you can purchase uh, treasury bills stocks, bonds, and fixed deposit. A lot of times you're looking at some nice interest, 15 to 20% interest. Uh, also, a land investment, if you're looking to build your economic paradise for business or build that home that you're looking to build, or build, you know, or even build a, uh, you know, a resort, better breakfast, uh, or just a business enterprise operation, you, know, you can get land for a very good, reasonable price. And the good thing about that, once you get the land or even you know, you can even take it further and get land in different locations and they'll build different projects. Uh, so when you talk about manufacturing, um, a lot of, there's a lot of fruits and vegetables there in Ghana. And you can do many things with that. Uh, a lot of things go to waste. You can put yourself in a position where you can manufacture the items. Uh, then, you know, you can uh, juice, can, and, you know, you can just expand the life cycle of, um, you know, those incredible fruits and vegetables that you have there in Ghana. Uh, and beyond that, uh, you know, you're looking at uh, other manufacturers that you can do, uh, import, export, and so on. Uh, the technology business and era is booming, so computer technology, cell phones, and so on, great investment market. But the ideal thing we always explain to everyone is take a journey and open your minds because most of the uh, things that, uh, you know, that they see here and things are going on, you know, when you open your mind there to the African continent, then you know you can just be more innovative and say, "Hey, I see some wonderful business ideas that uh, you know I can position myself and you know build business for myself, but also be a contribution and be a part of the future of Africa." Okay, keep it going, Bomani Tayemba, Africa for the Africans. Okay, can you tell? the audience why they should travel with Africa for the African investment tours and uh, why they should go with you and what they will get with you that they won't get with anyone else. Yes, absolutely. Family, we do a straight up customer service, personal uh, connection as far as just a one-on-one -on -one base and a group setting also with conference calls and have a well-organized uh, Ghana tour package. We have done Ghana tour packages uh, for 11 straight years, 13 different tours with over 290 different people. I'll give you a combination of four to five different regions of uh, activities and things that link you with roots, culture, business, investment, nightlife, shopping, networking, 
Uh, we have a, a lot of wonderful people there on the ground that can assist you if you're looking to live and do business, uh, which is more the most important part that we have showcasing that is not so popular in average our tourist to Ghana. Uh, we have uh, the repatriation, which is returning to the land of your ancestors. We're able to help and connect people by assisting them with acquiring land, assisting them with getting their business set up, connecting them with people that they can trust and do business with. Those are a lot of the important things that uh, were put in place when us traveling there in Ghana and build a network, a bridge between brothers and sisters that live on the African continent, that live in the African diaspora, and people that's also in the middle of that, that's going in between and connecting us, like our, our wonderful sister, Dr. Sharita, uh, we was just here recently talking about repatriation, telling brothers and sisters to get a plan, have a plan, be focused on a plan before you repatriate. Uh, so there's many opportunities there, uh, but the main thing is to build a plan and have a plan and be ready. Okay. All right, Bomani Tayamba, Africa for the Africans. This is another question. Just look straight. Let me get you from the side. That I have is, can you give us a little bit about your background and how Africa for the Africans first started and what brought you to this point? Absolutely, family. I originally born in uh, Kingston, Jamaica. Grew up in Brooklyn, New York. Um, and uh, along that journey, um, joined uh, the United States Navy and I was stationed there in Virginia Beach. And from uh, Virginia Beach, getting out of the Navy as an aircraft technician, just wanted to build myself a nice career there in the south, uh, you know, somewhere a little warmer. And I ended up um, connecting here in Atlanta, um, working at the Atlanta airport doing aircraft maintenance and that opened me up a world to connect with uh, one or two good brothers uh, that uh, shared details with me as far as this uh, Pan-Africanism, Roots culture and then also learn more about uh, the cultural part of the Atlanta area which is the West End and that just opened me up to this wanting to uh, study more um, and so while studying I built interest for um, wanting to go to uh, Africa. So 2003, spent a lot of time studying, reading books and watching videos. 2004, I found an incredible trip to Egypt and also connected with uh, some uh, co-workers that was going to Senegal. So that opened up my world to traveling in uh, 2004 and then 2005 went to some uh, more African countries, uh, South Africa, Kenya and also to Senegal again. And that opened the mind up to, you know, to, to wanting to just start organizing people. So in 2006, I uh, started uh, uh, a more organized journey from 2005, I was just trying to connect co-workers. Uh, so in 2006, I uh, built Enterprise, Africa for Africans, uh, based on the philosophies of Marcus Garvey, wanting us to build a future for our family and our generations in the African continent because uh, he saw the integration trap and this, the, uh, the, the distraction of of uh, us feeling that uh, you know we're gonna be a part of this nation and we'll be accepted so uh, I saw this a great opportunity based on the study of Marcus Garvey because throughout my studies I, f I felt like he had one of the best plans and I was just very disappointed you know, throughout the history of the 20th century that his plan wasn't pushed more by other so-called black leaders uh, you know he had a good amount of them turned against him but nevertheless, uh, that's unfortunate, so uh, Garvey had one of the biggest influence and still today you have a lot of us that believe in the vision of uh, Pan-Africanism, nation building on the African continent. So, you know, building this journey as a tour, get us to connect our people to a great African continent and great African countries like Ghana to where we can connect you around the countries and you can connect with other Pan-African brothers and sisters who believe in living and doing business on the continent and see a different future from us versus us working on a slave plantation system and you know it's one of those things where you just it, it, it gains momentum after a while it's not something that you just uh, you know that you just have a deep plan out now you know we've been around for a while and we realize the more and more of our importance especially when we look at people who are supposed to be known better and doing better but they're not they're pimping and playing with our people and they're playing with pan-africanism like this is a celebrity game or you know like it's uh, one of those uh, fake reality shows you know it's a lot of prominent names out there and it's all about how much people is following you and how many subscribers you got but you know it's not all about that it's about us really getting up and saying that we want to see a better life in our generations we want to see a better future for our children and doing things like building black owned business like Africa for the Africans 
and Bomani technology, uh, which fuels the entire Africa for the Africans and fuel all of the, the videography and all the technology that we do. And you know, it's, it's something that we're looking to really just push forward on the African continent as we build our enterprise and expand what you have as Africa for the Africans, uh, tourism investment uh, to this many wonderful things. And just keeping it flowing and just you know, let our brothers and sisters know that once we are, you know, what we have to really do is really focus on building the future in Africa, building the African continent because we are dealing with a serious trap in America and everything that uh, we've been told about our great displaces and thinking that we can really build something because people said, oh, we have built this, we have built this absolutely, so you, I'm with you 100%, so let's build Africa for the Africans. We have built America for the white Americans or America for the white devils or America for others other than ourselves. So family, it's about nation building in Africa. Okay, got another question. Omani Tayamba, Africa for the African Tourism Investment. One of the biggest um, attractions um, on the trip is the slave dungeons, Elmina and Cape Coast Castle. Can you just uh, talk a little bit about the experience of going through Cape Coast and Elmina, just one by one, uh, describe them differently? Yes, fam, it's hard to describe them differently because they're both a horrific place, but Cape Coast Holocaust Dungeon is in Cape Coast, Ghana, and Elmina Holocaust Dungeon is right there neighboring to Cape Coast. Two different cities right there, very close apart to where you can literally see both of them if you're looking from one angle to the next. But uh, what's uh, interested is uh, the fact that uh, I always tell people that uh, we should never destroy the crime scene. So here we are, Africa for the Africans, taking brothers and sisters. We have taken over 290 brothers and sisters to the African Holocaust dungeons there in Cape Coast and Elmina. Now, when you go to Cape Coast, it is terrifying. Uh, because this big fort was built to enslave your brothers and sisters and we're going through chambers and dungeons it's very dark uh, you, you hear about the stories it makes you some people get into the spirit some people freak out you see tears it's very painful it's emotional um, it's something that you know that's why I've dedicated to this where we just do tours where it's only our brothers and sisters that we take into those dungeons because um, you can li literally be in a situation where you're there and you just feel a bunch of white devils on you and you turn around and you just start cutting all of these damn devils throat and start killing every single last one of them it gets deep family being in the holocaust dungeon get deep to where you feel the energy of your oppressors oppressing you and you just raise up and kill them kind of like that movie Amistad you're there in the dungeons and you hear your brothers crying and screaming your sisters crying and screaming it is painful but we have no choice but to take you through it because our ancestors suffered and we let you know that we just don't take this luxury tour to Ghana it's emotional so when we go to the, 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 the cell where the revolutions was just fighting against their oppressors and they would just lock them in a the cell and then they starve them to death no water no food for a few, few days and leave them in their rest of dead bodies and you have a door called the door of no return right there our ancestors literally went out that door now we have coined it the door of return because we have returned you know, and, and it's the same situation in Elmina. You go there, it's this big fortress. And that one has a bridge. And the situations where if we were around a bunch of white people with us on tours, I swear, family, you would want to throw them off the bridge. So we have to be cautioned to not, to not deal with that liability. So we do the black org organized tours that we do. We take our brothers and sisters through the dungeons, cross that bridge into the Holocaust dungeons, and you see the Portuguese church and that's why you know when I go to Brazil and places and I talk about these damn Portuguese devils these evil wicked bastards while they're having church in the Holocaust dungeons our people are in the dungeons suffering so Elmina dungeons is another horrific place you now you, you step in one part of Elmina dungeons you hear about the stories about the white uh, devils just open up the doors and all African women have to come out and he pick which one he wants and him and his white devil bastard guards and people in his forces abuse them the way they want to abuse them and send them back down and order new ones I mean family <coughs> it's, it's deep it's so deep that I'm just like getting into the spirit of things so Cape Coast Elmina Holocaust Dungeons we take you there and we just bring you there and we're bringing you back to the scene of the crime alright um let's see what else 
No Africa for the Africans. Okay. All right, Bomani Tayamba, Africa for the Africans to an investment. All right, can you just explain um, what you see for the future for Africa for the Africans to an investment? Yes, family, what I see for Africa for the Africans is our um, repatriation and investment operation there in Techiman. Now, we coined this our Echo Village or Repatriation Village. Uh, but, uh, you know, we have uh, many names for it, but it's, uh, it's our headquarters which will house the Africa for the Africans tourism investment operation along with Bomani Technology and our repatriation energy and it will be a community um, of brothers and sisters and it will be connected to Benu Village up there in Techiman, the Branghafa region where we have a community center in the middle which connect both of our properties. We'll be working together uh, with all of our brothers and sisters there to promote the future of sustainable living to where we build our own infrastructure, we uh, build a world where we can just do a high-tech, high-level business uh, there on the African continent. We can create the jobs and create opportunities, build factories, build energy with our, with our own, and then just really just be a part of the future. It's, it's, it's to the point where once you start building business here in America, one of the biggest mistakes we make is that we just want to just keep this energy here in America. Family, I'm telling you, if you have business enterprise, expand them to the African continent. Let's be in the African continent and grow together. So ultimately, what we're looking to do is to be around many of our own brothers and sisters from the African diaspora and connect them with our brothers and sisters on the continent and for us to work together hand in hand to build the future of Africa for the Africans, for those of us there on the continent and in the African diaspora that want to see a strong Africa and be independent. So it's a lot of work to do. It's uh, more work than anything else. We can talk about this in and out, but uh, it really takes more and more of us visiting the countries and then seeing what we like and seeing what we can bring and connecting with each other. So it's, you know, it's something to where if you're someone that's a very disruptive uh, person, you know, we don't really want you around. Now stay here and give these people hell or stay here and stay out of our way. But uh, we need people who are dedicated and focused and that's going to just frown on the local people. People who just overstand pan-Africanism, overstand the investments that need to take place in Africa. So it's a lot of work that needs to be done, family. And that's why we, are, you know, we reach out to you and say we just, this is, these are not just videos we're doing. We're, we're reaching out to let you know that there's a real cry for us to build Africa for us because you know, white people don't run or own Australia, but they do now. You know, it, they wiped out the native people and same thing in America. And you know, if we don't do certain things about Africa, we'll be the same victim of this white domination system. Okay, got another one. Okay, Bomani time by Africa for the Africans. Can you just describe uh, one of your favorite moments you've had uh, in Africa going over for the past uh, 11 years? Yes, my favorite moment, family, is uh, the moment where we go to Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park. I've been there 13 times just as the 13 times I've been here to Ghana and uh, that's the, the site that uh, really disconnect me because you know you're dealing with an energy from Ghana uh, a brother that uh, studied here in America he grew up in the 40s and 50s and you know the 40s and 50s was straight revolution in black America and uh, he picked up the energy of uh, you know uh, Marcus Garvey the energy of the, the pan-Africanism and, and so on and just uh, learn and connect with many of our great scholars so going to uh, him going back and becoming the first president and just laying out a strong foundation for the future of Africa is really something that I look forward to because I always say to our brothers and sisters uh, when we're looking at the African continent and we're returning whether we're returning as as a Ghanaian that moved to America or we just return as someone that's a stone African like myself or the different variations of returning we should return with that path to want to be part of the future we should return with, with, with you know, contributing to the future and uh, you know, that's a great example and even when we talk about W.E. Du Bois and, um, and certain ways where he was against um, Marcus Garvey and against really just the flow of this independent nation building uh, later on connected and was a part of uh, you know, Kwame Nkrumah great life so just being there in Accra and being there connected to both sites and even George Padmore uh, Library uh, which is uh, George Padmore is from uh, Trinidad and he's a part of that, the independence uh, movement of just building the, the African uh, studies and this open up the intellectual minds to teach us more about the future of Africa. So I always felt that's a great point to get back to because that, that indicated the foundation of us moving forward to the future. Okay, got another one. Okay, Bomani Tayamba, Africa for the Africans.
can you just explain in brief uh, why Africans in the uh, America and other parts of the diaspora that have never been to Africa should go back? Yes, absolutely. The important things about reconnecting to the African continent is reconnecting to your, your bloodline energy of your roots and culture. What you have here is a fictitious culture. Your the things that we're taught is to be basically black white people. You know, we don't really know our way of life because we didn't grow up on African continent. So it's important to really just uh, go back, see what we missed out on, and then do our best to reconnect. You know, uh, most of us don't speak you know certain languages from the African continent, but it gives us a chance to learn that language, to learn the culture, way of life. But it only starts is if you break out of your comfort zone and take a journey. And that's why we offer a journey of the lifetime tours to the continent to where it's an in-between journey to where you're not completely shell-shocked, you know, but I'm telling you family, uh, once we ease our mind into the African continent, we really see more of the wonderful blessing that it is to return home. Okay, what else? I'm missing. What else? What else? What else? What else? Oh, got one more. Bomani Tayamba, Africa for the Africans, to the investment. Can you explain to the uh, potential clients what the shopping is like in Ghana? It's absolutely uh, for those who like to shop, shop, shop. Uh, when you go to uh, Kumasi, or even if you're there in Accra and you're there at a culture center, you're talking about all of the, the actual uh, arts and craft that's made in the country. That's one of the lo locations, so you're going to get the best price and the best deal. When you're in Kumasi, not only do you have access to the culture center where you can just do a lot of shopping, you know, you see things like your kente cloth, your mud cloth, uh, you see certain uh, artifacts, uh, wood carving, you get them right, right there. But also we go to the individual locations where these crafts are made. So we go to Banwir, the kente cloth manufacturing capital of the world. Uh, you go to Entanso, you know, the Dinka stamps, uh, everybody loves those. You know, you get your cloth and you put the different Dinka stamps and you can make stamps for your family and friends. Then you also got the wood carving village right there in Kumasi. But also in Accra up in the mountains in Avery, not a wood carving village that's incredible. And, you know, you can just, if you, you can't fit everything family, you can, sh you know, you can ship it back. Uh, but the shopping is so incredible to where you might have to bring a few extra credit cards. That's if you just want, and you can just keep on shopping. But, um... Uh, you know, I also encourage people, once you return to the African continent, you know, you have access to all these wonderful things, re-Africanize your life. But also you can do that there, here in America. So when you go, just fill up one bag full of shopping items and then uh, bring it back. All right. I got another one. Bomani Tamba, Africa for the Africans. Do you have many uh, return uh, people going back more than one time? Yes, we have had over 10 to 15 different people who have came. Some people have came back again by themselves. Some people have brought family and friends to share the journey for a lifetime. Uh, and uh, it, uh, even though it's a journey where you'd live, it's set to where you'd go once, enjoy it, and then you know, go on a different journey with us. Like, you know, if you go to, went to Ghana with us, then you know, we advise you to come to Ethiopia with us or come to South Africa with us, or, you know, one of our cultural tours uh, so somewhere else. Like, you know, we do, uh, do tours to Brazil, you know, come with us to that tour. Uh, but definitely uh, people are coming more and more on the journeys um, and as we begin to just build more tour energy we have more and more people just seeking out those other options. Alright, got another one. Bomani Tayamba, Africa for the Africans. Can you uh, explain to people as far as, um, because a lot of people uh, use as an excuse the cost of the tour and can you explain the cost versus what you will gain from going? Yeah, the cost of the journey is basically you have to make certain sacrifices because instead of taking a few different vacations, it's uh, cut back. And instead of going to Christmas shopping and buying a bunch of gifts or Thanksgiving uh, spending or just um, out there spurging on shopping, buying a bunch of uh, stuff at these uh, white stores that, you know, or just out there just buy, you know, buying a bunch of weave or buying a bunch of uh, this or that or just spending this money this ridiculously learn to sacrifice for two or three years or even a year or so and budget yourself uh, make a deposit uh, pay yourself and make payments uh, but it's not a situation where it's cost more than anything else uh, and you know the tours we just do our best to make them as reasonable and life fulfilling as possible so we offer the repatriation investment conference a whole lot of networking we offer you know just a connection to different investment ideas to where you can start building the future and then naturally uh, you know you know the transformation. You know you're you be able to connect and get a feel of being in Africa versus 
you thinking and wondering about it and going off other people's experience. And then the ultimate thing about it, you, you know, the, the cost is paying for your accommodation, so you'll be able to just enjoy your lodging, enjoy your meals, enjoy a two weeks getaway and everything. And it's just worth it for at least one time, once in your lifetime to just do this and that way you can just really just connect it to everything else and it, we guarantee that it will change your life and that's why we call it the journey of a lifetime. Okay, another one. Can you uh, explain what is included in the cost? Yes, what's included in the cost is uh, lodging, two to a room, uh, transportation on a tour bus, doing an entire tour around the country, uh, access to all sites, activities, business and investment conference, continental breakfast, uh, gourmet dinner. Um, so you end up having to just pay for your own lunch and that's, uh, that's about it. So the ticket is also included. So wherever you live at uh, in the world, we can um, get you a flight arrangement and just put together a nice package uh, deal for your family and get you up there. But the tour packages to Ghana are up there in the uh, mid 3000 range, which is uh, a few hundred to a thousand dollars less than the competitors who have their tour packages in the 4000 range. And the thing of it is, we do all of our work so we don't have to pay a bunch of other folks and so naturally you know and we're here in the south so the cost of everything is a little lower so we're able to beat out all competition on a global scale on tour packages okay one more question what hold up let me get a question right <laughs> Yes, family, but money time, but live on Revolutionary Cam, Lincoln, my brother, Kofi Bruce, as we're doing the Revolutionary Cam production and many wonderful documentaries coming up, family. Okay, I got another one. Okay, can you explain to the people what the actual people in Africa are like and their reaction towards uh, black people from America? Yeah, the actual people in Africa are just like uh, brothers and sisters from Dallas, so they're black people just like me and you. Only difference is uh, sometimes you may hear a certain accent, uh, that's it. Um, you, you see certain different maybe style of cultural clothing, maybe some people may have travel marks, some people don't. Uh, but you're looking at your own brothers and sisters. Uh, some of the things, you know, so you're looking at, I'm looking at a Ghanaian. I'm looking at someone that's been colonized, and then he's looking at me, a brother and sister, brother from uh, you know from Jamaica. I've been uh, enslaved, but you know, you know, it's one of those situations where me and him could have been right there in Ghana together, or uh, or what was known on the Gold Coast at that time, and then we get snatched up by white devil slave traders or their their their, their puppet sellout uh, black folks that uh, they sent to go snatch us up, and uh, he, I got caught and sent to Jamaica, and, and he escaped, and then time went by down to where. You know, where centuries later we meet and reconnect. You know, and you know, and and that's it. You know, it's just we've been divided apart. You know, so that's why we just tell people this um, to focus on, on, on the, the the big picture, and focus on the fact that uh, your brothers and sisters um, love you very much. Uh, we all feel bad about what happened. Um, you know, and I've, you know, and so on. So when you get to Ghana, you're connecting with your brothers and sisters. Sisters, you know, your, your folks. You know, you're able to really just. Um, you know, that's kind of, it's, it's kind of like a, a, a moment of, of, of healing, but it's just incredible just to just see your own people and it's like, wow, uh, this is how our folks on African continent look just like me. And when you've been embraced saying that, I thought you was Ghanaian, uh, if you don't speak, you'd be, you know, everyone, you know, it is, that embracement is, just, you know, because when you come here, when, I, you know, when you come here in America, or go anywhere in America, white folks don't treat you anywhere, and they, they don't treat you, you, you fail, feel no kind of brotherhood anywhere, unless, unless for those magical black people that be talking about they've never been treated bad by the white system or, or white people, I just dare to see that because, you know, so, like everyone, when we all get there to Ghana, we like, whew, you, know, you just feel like you're home, you feel embraced, so, right. I love it. Let me get one more. Let me just get you to say your name and Africa for the African Tours and Investments, like my name. Yes, family. Bomani Tai Imba, Africa for the African Tours and Investments. All right. Yes, family. It's about nation building. <laughs> Look straight at that. You your camera. Say it again. Same thing. Africa for the African Tours and Investment. This is Bomani Tai Imba, the director of the organization. All right. All right.
I think I got enough to get started. Yes, appreciate you, my brother Kofi Bruce. and appreciate okay. your family for checking out. Uh, we're working on many footages. Uh, we're going to be shooting many documentaries. We're going to be shooting many films and organizing many things. We're going to be dealing with repatriation, nation building, investment in Africa. Um, talking about um, how we must just build for ourselves. You know, we talked about different books as far as uh, Marcus Garvey, uh, philosophies and nation building. It gets deeper, and you know, it's um, it's one of those things where you know, through my time of just learning about my roots and culture, I ran into many people that you know these Negroes. They just want to sit around and read books all damn day long. And sometimes I want to hit them upside of the damn book mm -hmm. <laughs> knock, <laughs> and knock some damn sense into them. You know, so. One of the things I've been pushing over the years, because I'm more practical, was, uh, you know, was that um, let's, you know, let's do more organizing work, uh, let's build more business, let's do more entrepreneurship, uh, let's basically practice what we preach. <laughs> That's it. So I, have, I do have some of uh, my own brother, brothers and sisters and other folks that are supposed to be conscious that may not like what I say, but it's, it's true, it's real. Uh, and I remember, being, I remember people used to tease me and talk, and talk mess about me because they knew more about Africa than me. And they, they, they was a little, you know, a little more conscious in me, and you know, I was just like, you know, just trying to learn. You know, I was in my mid twenties and trying to learn, and uh, it was, and they're the same assholes and idiots that I still see the books. I swear, next time I see them with that book, I'm gonna distract them and take the book from them and knock them upside the head because it's that crazy stuff where, you know, where, you know, we, we confuse ourselves, you know, and um, I really just believe that, you know, you know, beyond just practicing what you preach is like. What is your message to the generation? It's okay to talk about, you know, talk about, like, it's okay for us to talk about white devils and then we don't work towards doing for ourselves. And, you know, it's like, you know, you know, we just have to go beyond just the talk and the rhetoric and just literally, honestly, just go beyond this, you know, just us being about nothing. You know, it's, it's sad and, you know, you know, and that's why we have to just really, just honestly, just push this bold statement, Africa for Africans. And which I have a bunch of punk ass black folks sometimes that give me hell and I want to just like literally just, you know, you know sometimes you just wish they could just, just do themselves a favor and just go jump off the balcony and just, or just, you know, you know, you're, you know, you're basically useless when you just don't see the need for us doing for ourselves. The entire world, you know, I have to say Africa for Africans on, you know, on TV. As a matter of fact, I, I want to say almost 90 to 100 percent of all media outlets that you see basically on your you know your TV and your radio is only controlled by some sort of white entity um, and if not so to a point uh, but you know it's like communication is just dominated by other people so it's like you know why can't we just do for ourselves you know and it's like you know you know it's like you know sometimes people fear this big white bad wolf that's nowhere around where's the big white, bad white wolf where's he at yeah. You know, that he's just gonna come out of nowhere and just lynch your ass and do certain things. You know, and it's like, you know, I think you know, people respect you more if you stand up for yourself. What do you think, Kobe Bruce? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> you know, um, and you know, the fact that you know, it's not like you're jeopardizing nothing from them. You know, it, it's like, but you know, we must stand for ourselves regardless. You know, I, a lot of our ancestors had to die, and you know, blood had to be shed, you know, for change. But uh, you know, you live in a situation where. We're not asking people to do a whole lot of things. We're not asking anybody to pick up guns and spares. We're not asking people to blow up buildings and do things. We're just basically asking people to, to be more consciously aware and awareness, support black owned business, save your coins, save your cash flow, save your checks, save your cash flow, save your money. Think about traveling to Africa, living and investing also, and think about just sharing the positive uh, light of just the future of Africa with your children. Think about something different. Think about the real Wakanda. If that movie inspired you, think about the things that you can actually work towards that. So family, uh, I'm not a big talker, but I appreciate your energy and we're going to connect and keep it real and keep you posted all the wonderful things you're doing. In the background, you see two things. You see a map of Africa, so you know we're about traveling. And you see the bookshelf right there, so you know we're about studying. You know what I mean? We don't just talk stuff. You know, we study. You see the band up there, the you know, Kente Cloth. Bam, bam. You know, you know, our, our, our brothers uh, just etched that up there for us. Uh, you know, with uh, you know, Africa for Africans, uh, you know, right there banner. Um, you know, you see the trophies on the top. You know, your brother's an athletic person. I mean, uh, you know, also you know, prior military, this you know, uh, aircraft technician. So you know, you know, for operation person. You know, so we think about things, think about the skills that we have learned, and think about using them for a positive, lighter energy. We can use your help, brothers and sisters, if 
you feel that you can just be about Africa and come to Africa and build with us. You know, it's, you, know, you love the continent. Uh, don't let nobody tell you about what's going on in Africa. If you want to know about Africa, ask somebody like myself who've been to many countries and who have footage on YouTube and many places where you can check it out. So family, once again, this is Bomani Tayamba. We're live on Revolutionary Cam. I'm here at Bomani Technology, here at the headquarters, here at the spot. ATL South, this is where we do it. We're looking to bring many, many more production to your life. Keep it real, family. All right, let me get one more.